Thank you to Vendu for sponsoring today's video. Hey everybody, welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you. Today I am going to do a different style what sold video. Last week I had one of my very best sales ever, if not the most profitable sale that I've ever had in my over four years of reselling. So I figured we would talk about that and I think I'm just going to do like like a shared screen so I don't have to like pop images up and I feel like the conversation will flow a little bit better that way and you good Lou you better you good I think the conversation will flow better that way. And then I can kind of venture off and talk a little bit about other sales. We can really see what the breakdown was with fees and things like that. Let me know if you enjoy this style video and I thought it would be a fun time to reflect on the year with sales, talk about some of the changes we're seeing in the reseller community. I'm gonna start with this sale since it's right here. I love this sweater so much. This is uh, by Cloth and & Stone. And Cloth & Stone is a brand that I'm very fussy about picking up these days, but I picked this up and I knew it was going to be a winner and I looked at some of the comps and they were really promising. Can you guess what I sold this for? I listed it for $75 or $78. I've had it for a couple months and it is an extra small and I received an offer on Poshmark yesterday. I believe it was $66 and I definitely accepted. Yes, yeah, $66 for this Cloth and Stone by Bella Doll Fuzzy Camo Cardigan. This was a sweater that was featured on Revolve. That always helps um, because I think Revolve has a nice loyal following. Also this morning I sold a pair of Timberland Timberland men's cushion boot socks. Uh, that was a outright purchase. These were new with tag socks and they sold for $20, not bad. So far this month, I have done $2,750 in sales on Poshmark, but really some of my very best sales have been on eBay this month. This is probably the most I've ever made on eBay in a single month. This will be my last video before I start Happy Holidays, which I'm super excited about. That is going to start on Thursday, December 1st, and I will do a haul every single day for 10 days. I mix it up. Some are thrift hauls. I usually do my favorite things. This year I'm featuring all Amazon products that are my favorite things. I do a thrifting gift at the very end of the week. I usually have a bins haul video in there. I'm also going to do a viewers challenge this month, a Christmas edition. So definitely stay tuned. Be sure you're subscribed to my channel if you would like to be part of my community and participate in Happy Holidays. It's a really fun thing. I look forward to it every year. And hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when I release a video. So let's get started with some of my best sales of 2022. Let's start with the big kuna. This is a sale that if you follow me on social media, you saw a reel perhaps that I posted over on Instagram. I purchased a Gunny Sachs vintage dress and it was in like new condition from the early 80s, late 70s. My girlfriend Marguerite found it when we were shopping at Savers. I knew the second we found it, we had found something super special. I have sold a few gunny sacks in my day, I think three, three, and then I had a knockoff gunny sacks that sold for $139, and I knew this was going to be really special. I listed it for $749, I just wanna call it up here on eBay. So I listed it for $749. These are some of the photos that I included, and it was a size 10, which is really amazing. And here, oh, a size 11, junior sizing. And you can see how crisp the tag was. I mean, this was just such a find. Um, so I listed it for $749. In one day, I got an offer for 550, and I polled my audience on Instagram. I'm like, should I take it and run, or should I hold out? There was so much interest. I think on Poshmark, it, the listing's taken down now. I had close to 100 likes on this and I had sent out so many offers. I countered for $650 and then the person went away. So for months now, I've been thinking, oh my gosh, did I make the wrong call there? I did decide to hold out. Um, somebody was watching it on eBay, which I have had several watchers. I have sent out several offers to no avail. At this particular time, I sent an offer for $600 and my buyer accepted 
accepted. I only paid $4 for this item. I think it was priced at $6.49 and I had 30% off at Savers that day. So a $4 investment. It did sell via promoted listing on eBay and a lot of the sales that you're going to see from eBay today did sell via promoted listing. I promote my items at 2% and I don't always do it right away. I'm very unsystematic about how I promote my listings. I always promote them at 2%, no more, no less. I don't know how I came up with that number, but that's what I do. And I usually wait a few weeks until um, an item might be becoming stale and then I'll go in. These are my sales in the past 31 days. Just this month, it's been over 2,400. So this is the best month I've I think ever had on eBay. Yes, it says my sales are up 435%, but let me just see where are all my listings. Listings, active, it always takes me a while to like figure out where I'm actually going on eBay. So right here, these quick filters, I use this section of eBay a lot. Um, promoting listings eligible. I'll click on this every once in a while. I did it last week and I had like over 50 items that were eligible and I'll click and then I will click all of these items. These are relatively newer listings, I imagine. And then I will say promote, and it suggests 7%, but I always um, bring it down to 2%. And then I promote it. And then we just see what happens. This is another filter I use all the time, send offers eligible. So this comes up if anybody is watching your item and then I can go through and I can send offers on all of these things. This Dagny and Dover item gets so much attention, but nobody has bought it yet, but I'll offer $50 on that. You can do a percentage off, like I could click all of these items and do a percentage off everything, or I can go individually. This Dale of Norway sweater, I have at 75, let's offer that at 60. And I just go through and do this for some. Uh, this is a new pair of boots that I have. I'll do these at 65. Let's see. You can see there's no rhyme or reason <laughs> sometimes. Uh, this triangle two-piece bathing suit, we'll do 45 on that. That's 30% off because it is out of season. Um, some of the things I always want to double check that they're in stock because I worry about eBay. These vintage Jones New York, I've had these forever. Let's let's offer 25 on those and see if they go. They're linen and they're vintage and they've been around. This is something new that I just posted. These Isotoner gloves at $38. Um, they're cashmere lined and I bought them at Savers. Um, I only I paid under $4 for them, but there were holes on the cashmere of the liner, which I didn't see until I got home. But anyways, I'll offer 30. The original price is $65, so you get the gist. But this is how I promote, this is how I go in and figure out what offers I wanna, um, what items I wanna send offers on. So here we are, these are some of my sales from the month. So here is the gunny sacks. It did end up selling, um, I do need to leave feedback too. There's always so many things to think about. So with a promoted listing, that means um, this did sell via promoted listing. So eBay on top of their normal fees will take an additional 2% of the $600, which is $12, 2% as a fee for promoting it. So you'll see that a couple times. Another big sale for me this month was this Canada Goose. The Canada Goose sold for more money than the gunny sack sold for. However, I paid $250 for this coat, so my profit was not the same. It's always really important. I mean, it's helpful, not necessarily really important, but it's helpful to know when you're watching videos the cost of items because sometimes people do retail arbitrage or liquidation and they're paying a lot more money for their items and they might be like, oh, this sold for 150, this sold for 300, these sold for 600, but they're paying much more. So this was pre-owned. I did buy it at a thrift store, but I did pay $250 for it. I had it listed for $8.99 and I received an offer for $6.99. Um, so this was pretty fantastic as well. But if I come over to Vendu and show you Oh, so today's video is sponsored by Vendu. I'm just going to show you in real time how I use Vendu in figuring out like some of my fees, marking items that are sold. I mean, I am just constantly referring back to Vendu. Sometimes I will look on Vendu to see if an item is sold before I accept an offer on eBay or I'll go over to Poshmark and let's look at the sold listings. I'm going to look at Canada Goose so I can see this item. So this is my men's Canada goose that sold and up here is all the sale information. Um, so 
I have that, it sold for $699. I did not put my market fees in here. You can add your market fees, I rarely do. I'm more interested in like what my cost of goods were. I mean, it's nice to know the bottom line and it's very easy to figure out Poshmark because Poshmark is 20%. Um, but right here, my cost of goods was 250 and then my profit was $449, um, less fees from eBay. So I didn't profit quite as much on this sale, even though it sold for more money as I did on the Gunny Sacks. The Gunny Sacks is to date my highest profit sale on the internet which is very exciting. Um, so this was $449 less the um, fees from eBay. And I believe this also did sell via promoted listing. And you can just look back here and it says sold via promoted listing. Here's another item that sold for higher money on eBay. This was crazy to ship. This was the American Girl White and Silver Pretty City Carriage. I've had this for a while. I bought this when I worked at American Girl for, I don't know, I think I had 15 or $20 written. We used to have these insane employee sales. And this was something I bought at the employee sale. I may have paid a little bit more, maybe $30 for it, but it sold for $200 and it sold via promoted listing. So again, eBay would take an additional $4 for the ad because I do 2%. What did I charge for shipping on this? This was crazy to ship. I charged $39 for shipping on this and it cost me like $41. Um, I ended up shipping it through UPS because the box was too big to send via USPS. And I'm learning as I go a lot about shipping with eBay. For the future, this may have been a better item to list like on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or do something that is like local pickup only. All's well that ends well. The feedback, I, I'm still at 100% positive feedback over here. So I'm assuming this feedback was good if they left me any. But those were three really big sales this month on eBay. The Pretty City Carriage, $200. The Gunny Sacks, $600 that's $800 and then the Canada Goose for $699. So that's $14.99 in sales. My total sales for the month so far on eBay, there's just a couple days left in this month, are $2,400. And these comprise of more than 50% of those sales. So this was an outlier of a month for me on eBay, but I'm so excited and you know, I had some of my best sales ever this month, which was super exciting. So now let's go over to Poshmark and check out some of my sales for this month. One of the features that I really love on Poshmark right now are the Closet Insights. I use this tab all the time. Click on that tab. That tells you my sales for the current month. I'm at $27.50. Um, and you can see uh, the second, the third, the seventh, the eighth, the 20th, 24th, and 25th. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've had seven no sales days on Poshmark. And this is one of the things I wanted to discuss because a lot of people have been talking about how things have changed for resellers and things are much harder since Poshmark Lives started, since Whatnot came on the scene. I really feel like right now, it feels a little weird to me too, the whole reselling world. And I feel that we have just really entered like a post-pandemic life. Even though it is still happening, people are still getting COVID and getting sick and that sort of thing. From my standpoint, we've been double vaccinated, double boosted. Like I feel like I have moved forward. There are still some shops in Boston that I go into still need to wear my mask, still need to wear my mask in, you know, medical places. But in general, I feel like we are moving forward. And as we move forward, inflation is play, pay, playing a huge role in all of our lives. We're seeing it at the grocery store, we're seeing it online, we're seeing it with shipping, small shops, are having a hard time, um, not just small shops. I think in general, people are having a hard time finding help. People seem to be short staffed. Prices are rising. It feels like we're trying to find our way post pandemic. And I think that it's affecting reselling too. I really don't think it's just Poshmark Lives that are contributing to low sales. I think there is so much going on. It's really hard to pinpoint something. What I do think, is that Poshmark is really pushing Poshmark Lives, which I have not done a Poshmark Live sale yet. I did the training while I was in Florida and Disney, and I never actually scheduled my first class. I don't even know if I got credit for attending that because I thought they were supposed to send me a barcode and I was supposed to go in and take a survey, and I didn't do any of that. And the truth of the matter is, 
I just need some time this holiday season to not be doing live sales. I think I'm gonna do one whatnot sale just as a check-in with my whatnot family at some point before Christmas. But what I wanna say about live sales is yes, I do think they're impacting our sales. However, I believe that your live sales shopper is a different profile than your normal shoppers on Poshmark, than our traditional shoppers on Poshmark. Um, and you see it in the comments of videos I've put out, videos other resellers have put out, sharing our frustration or addressing the concerns of others when it comes to live sales. And a lot of people in the comments are like, I don't even like live sales. I go in and then I leave. Now people are doing silent sales, is that a thing? I haven't heard of that or seen it, but I heard that too recently. People are like, if I want something, I don't wanna to have to sit through a live sale. I don't think that it's necessarily the competition at this stage of the game. I think when everything was new and whatnot was blowing up, it definitely pulled a lot of people. And I think some people have stayed with whatnot as buyers and as sellers. But I really think that your, like your QVC style shopper is different than your person who's going in and looking for a pair of Madewell jeans in a size 10 in a dark wash. Those are not the people that are leaving Poshmark. So I do think that Poshmark is probably favoring all of these sales in the algorithm because we get a crazy amount of notifications that are nuts. However, I don't necessarily think that they're stealing our buyers. Do you know what I mean? I do like live sales a lot. I just haven't had the time for it right now. And I really wanted to focus on my numbers because to bring it back to this, as you can see here, if I go to my, oh, I'm sorry. If I go back to Closet Insights and I go current year, watch the situation. Okay, so I'm just over 40,000 in sales this year. But if you look at all time, I am down this year. So last year in 2021, my Poshmark total sales were $56,000. It is highly unlikely, I would say near impossible, that I will sell $16,000 in the next two days of November in the entire month of December. It's just not gonna happen. So you can see here my progression this was when I first started. I didn't even start Poshmark until 2018. I mean, until August of 2018, I did 5,000 in sales that year. 2019, 31 in change. 2020, I did 47, so close to 48,000. I know that year I was shooting for 50,000. And then 56,000 last year, my goal for this year was $75,000 on Poshmark because I wanted to keep increasing and I'm not even gonna hit 50,000. So my sales are definitely down, but my eBay sales are up and whatnot was not even part of my business plan last year. And my YouTube revenue is up and I put a lot of attention uh, to my YouTube business. I think last month I did like $3,000, a little over $3,000. I think Jay said it was 3,200. He, he gets the memos. I think it was $3,200 in ad revenue from YouTube. YouTube is definitely building. And so I think I've gotten a little bit laxed on my reselling platforms or I'm not pushing quite as hard. Those are all the things that are playing in, but I really love this closet insights. And yeah, my sales are definitely down. It'll be interesting to see how things fare in 2022 how Poshmark Lives go. If you're doing Poshmark Lives as a seller and it's working for you, let me know in the comments. I'm excited to do them, but I think I'm going to wait until the new year to get back into the swing of things with live sales um, because the holidays are very busy for me. But I did wanna come over here and just talk a little bit about like the climate of Poshmark and what's going on. Let me know, have you been doing well? I talked to one of my close friends who's primarily an eBay lister. And by primarily, I mean she lists everything on eBay first. I would say for me on this current month, I mean, I've had some strong days like with sales over $200. Um, and I haven't been listing all that much. Okay, so here is another thing that I always check on Vendu. So I come over to Vendu to just like check myself because I think sometimes we can be emotional. Ah, uh, Poshmark sucks, everything's awful, the algorithm's screwing me over. But I think sometimes people don't always reflect on what they're actually doing. So for me, when I look at my sales and I say, okay, my sales are down this month, so let's see what's going on. I come over here and I look at um, how many items I've listed. So this month I listed 140 items. That's down 20% from last month. Last month I listed 175 items. Um, I'm selling more items and my average selling price is higher 
which is ironic because my listings are down. So I'm wondering if I was listing more frequently, um, you know, that could be a different number. And I like to do 200 listings a month. That's what I always shoot for, but inevitably I, I fall short. Like I'm definitely not gonna get 200 in this month. We only have two days left in the month and I'm starting to prepare for happy holidays. It's just not gonna happen, but maybe I'll get 150, 160 up this month. I wanna talk a little bit more about Vendu. So Vendu is a cross listing service that allows you to cross list your items to multiple marketplaces. And right here on the screen are the marketplaces that they offer. Depop, eBay, Etsy, Facebook, Grailed, Kittison, Mercari, Poshmark, Shopify, and Tradesy. My main platforms, Poshmark, eBay, and Depop. And Depop's been pretty sad because I've neglected it since I started doing live sales. My two main platforms are Poshmark and eBay. When I draft items, I use the mobile app and I go downstairs and I take the photos. Tina has primarily been taking my photos. Tina is my assistant. She'll take the photos, do the measurements, make minor adjustments with the editing and the lighting, remove the background for me, and then she will save it. And then I will go in and do the research stuff, figure out what the sold comps are. If there's a stock photo and I choose to use a stock photo in the listing, I'll take a screenshot of that and add it. I will decide what I wanna price it at. And then I go in and I do all the little areas that need my help. Let's take, for example, this vintage brown purse, which is really beautiful leather. This is what it looks like in the Vendu form on my laptop. Everything that you see here was done through the app. So I come in and like, I might brighten it up a little bit, pull it in a little and boom, that looks gorgeous. And then I save it down here. This, um, you can see that it has these sharp lines where Tina um, took the photo, so I will come in. I do my best to like get our hands out of things if possible, so you know, maybe I'll do that. It's not always the biggest deal, but I'll do that. That shows the pocket. We're gonna save that. I'll come in here, uh, bring this over to the side there, and then press save. You know what, I think I wanna make that a little bit more contrast or a little bit brighter. So you can do editing in here. You can also do some minor editing on your phone. I'm just so much faster on my computer. It's great when you're out and about to be able to access Vendu from your phone. So we'll go like this. And then, so I'll go through each one and do that. And whoops, this just says that it's genuine leather. And also when I do my editing, and this is just a, a me thing, I like to have an image, like a good image be my first photo and my last photo. So right here, I think I'm gonna take another screenshot of this because um, I would like to have this as my last photo as well. So when people are scrolling on Poshmark, it's the last photo they see that's right above the description. So now I'm just gonna um, upload photos here. You can do this right from Vendu. I'm gonna upload, but now I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a, I'm gonna add some saturation there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at the woven detail on this. But I think I'm gonna pull it in a little bit, give a little bit of a different perspective like that so people can really appreciate the beauty of the weave here. So then you can you can see all the items here. Vintage brown leather purse. So I will add a little bit to this. I don't know if this is vintage. I'm assuming it is. Where does it say that it's made in India? It's hard to say if this is vintage. So I might take that out and I just might say, um, how do I wanna say this? I might say woven leather brown tote bag. Maybe soft woven leather, because this is so, and then I'll say fully lined. How's that? So I'll, I'll add to the description, make it a little bit more robust to my title. And then in the description, good pre-owned condition, super soft. It gives the measurements, two slap, close, two slap snap closures, two inside pockets, two open pockets. This is all the um, detailing that Tina put in here. And I just might say beautiful woven leather detail like that. So brand, there is no brand, condition, pre-owned, primary color brown, and these are all the things that are in Vendu. So I draft everything right here on Vendu. And then I will go into clothing, shoes, and accessories for women, and then I go to bags. And then I think I'm gonna list this, I'm gonna $60, let's see, and I got this at the bin, so my cost of goods was about $2, and then I save it. So this is all done in the Vendu section over here. Then I'll come over to Poshmark, and I'm going to list it on Poshmark. So there are a couple extra things that Poshmark requires, so I just can't press like one button from Vendu. 
but standard one size, I'm not gonna put the measurement in there. It's not a crossbody, it is a tote, so I'll do that. Poshmark always asks for the original price. I don't know it, so I just put zero, and then boom, list on Poshmark. That's it. It doesn't even have to be done listing, and you can quickly go over to eBay, and eBay has different fields that they require. So here, I'm gonna say that it's leather. Whoops. I just wanna show you in real time how long it takes to list. Style is a tote. You can also just type it up here and then click it. I have a bad habit of scrolling down. This is brown. They have all sorts of different browns. I just say brown so nobody can argue with me. Like, oh, well you said it was chestnut brown and really I think that it's this color brown. So I just say brown to save myself. You can do optional fields here. And this is uh, where people who are better <laughs> at eBay than me will put in all of their things here. I don't really add much to this at all unless it's something really special or I'm pricing really high. To me, it's more important for me to get things listed than to have every little detail. And you may completely disagree with me and that's okay, but I know myself and if I sit there and try to add in every optional field, I'm not gonna do it. And that probably results in less sales for me and I'm okay with that. So shipping costs, you have to put in your own shipping. I'll say $7.99. This is probably gonna be heavier than first class because it will be over a pound. So I just put priority one to three days. And here we are, $60. I allow best offer and I list it on eBay. That's all I do. And now you can see over here on the side here, listed on eBay, listed on Poshmark and Vendu's up here. Now, if I wanted, I could come over to Depop. The cool thing about Depop, well, cool or not cool, depending on how you look at it, they only accept four photos. So then I would have to decide which four photos I wanted. Another thing that my good friend Ryan from Jack Valentine's channel, when I first started, he, he swiped up and he said, hey, hon, I just looked at your Depop account you don't have title. So Depop doesn't have a line specific for title. See, they just have a description. So what you have to do for Depop is I take a, you know, I copy and paste my title and I put it in my first line of my description on Depop and then it's super fast. So something unique to Depop is they have this style thing. They have this on other platforms as well, but I think it's more important here on Depop. You can do loungewear, goth, boho. I can do Western. I could do, what else would this be? Uh, casual, like you could do whatever you want for keywords that people typically search. And I think Depop has like a lot of those keywords that their users are currently searching. But anyways, that is the gist of how I use Vendu. So when an item sells, you're able to go in and mark it as sold. So take, for example, this new with tag calculator that I just listed. I can click on this, say it sells on eBay for $25. I can come up here, I can mark it as sold. And then over here, I just say that the price it sells for, say I say $25, and then I mark it sold. It will automatically delist from any other platform it's listed on. I'm not gonna put it in there because it didn't sell yet. But right over here you see eBay listed, Poshmark listed. If I said it sold on eBay for $25, it would automatically delist it on Poshmark for me, which is fantastic. So I know I've said a lot about Vendu. I can't say enough about them. I thought today's video where I'm sharing the screen, screen going over sales from multiple platforms. I thought it was a good time to mention them, what they mean to my business. If you want to give Vendu a try, click the link in my description and you can try them out. You get the first month for 25% off. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me. I'd be happy to answer them. They have great customer service. I've been using them since October of 2019. Many of the people who work at Vendu are also resellers themselves. So they are on both sides of this equation, which I think makes them so in tune with what we do. Anyways, thank you, Vendu, so much. Uh, I love being your partner and thank you for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to a few more sales on Poshmark. So I just wanna search sales from this month. So on Poshmark, you can come over here and do start date. Uh, I'm going to say November 1st until today. Um, so this, this way, when we're looking at my sales, we're only going to see the things that sold this month. So I did mention that I wanted to do like my top 10 sales of the month. Oh, this was a really good sale. These were new without tag shoes that sold very quickly. Um, they sold to a viewer. I purchased these at a local shop outside of Boston. I paid just $6 for these. So this was a huge return. This was the video where the owner handed me these shoes. She was, she was starting to stock some shoes. I believe that the shoes that she was putting out at the time were shoes that were had been priced up 
previously and if they don't sell by a certain amount of time they keep marking them down and then they just put them on the floor so i think these shoes had been sitting for a while they might have been priced at 9.99 14.99 19.99 whatever they didn't sell so now they were on the floor they still had the tissue inside this was a huge profit so i sold them for 152 dollars which is incredible so if we show the details here you'll see um, they sold for 152 less Poshmark fees, which were $30. So my net earnings were $121.60 minus the $6. So basically $115 profit and those sold really fast. So that was definitely one of my best sales this month. This is an item that just sold the other day and this was a good sale as well. This was a Free People Adela Maxi Slip Dress in Mocha. It sold for $70. It was behind the counter at Goodwill in Boston and I had just sold this exact dress in turquoise take note of this dress because I think it's like a little bit of a free people bolo the turquoise one that I sold I think sold 50 or 60 dollars this one was new with tag and it was brown which in my opinion is a more desirable color especially this time of year I had this listed for 89 dollars and I received a 70 dollar offer on it but let me go over to Vendu and see what I paid for that I want to say it was like 15 dollars or something um, I'm gonna say free people maxi you can just look really quick all right so this sold um, and here it is so I paid $16 cost of goods my market fees were 14 and then so my profit was $40 and it's all right here so I don't have my cost of goods on Poshmark but I keep it here in Vendu and then you can see and then this is the other dress this is the teal one. So this one sold back in September. This sold for $50. I only paid seven. This was pre-owned and my profit was $33. So that is a really great dress and I was happy that that sold. So let's shoot for sales over $50, shall we? Um, we'll go through here. A lot of these I have covered on um, you know, some of my ship and shop videos. I think I covered these in my ship and shop. These are a Point Sur wide leg crop high rise jean. Uh, these were new with tag. They sold for $52 and I have had these for a while. I don't know if it says when I listed it initially. Point Sur, oh, okay, I haven't marked these so sold yet, but luckily they were only here on Poshmark. So on Vendu, they have this little um, clock in the top left corner and that lets you know it's been listed for a while. Look, it's been listed for four. 498 days so this actually already sold um, so I'm gonna go in here and do Marcus sold just as I talked about earlier and it sold for $52 I'm gonna come over here to Poshmark and we are gonna see when they did sell so these sold on November 19th so you can also adjust the date here and I can say November 19th sold and then Marcus sold there we go so here's the info sold for $52 market fee prices marketplace fees were $10.40 my cost of goods was eight my profit was $33 and 60 cents so yeah I'm forever toggling between my platform and Vendu all right this is the sale I went over this morning right here um, this sweater was just so gorgeous and you saw how squishy and beautiful that was can't remember what I paid for that so let's look up this cloth stone okay I haven't marked this sold yet oh no I did mark it sold okay um, cost of goods five dollars oh I think I picked this up at that designer thrift store yeah so this was a great profit my profit was forty seven dollars and eighty cents on this um, and this sweater was just gorgeous. If that was in a larger size, I don't think it would have ever left my home. I think that might be like six or seven sales. So let's keep looking here. And I might have a couple more on eBay as well, but you can see some of my sales. Oh, this was another Free People. Oh gosh, are we noticing a pattern here? I love Free People. This sweater just sold recently, so for $57. And when I picked this up, I was like, look at the length of the arms on this. They were like massive. And I thought it was gonna look very awkward on, but this had a lot of likes. Does it say how many? I had 11 likes. I thought it was a little bit more than that, but this sold pretty quickly. So this sold for $57. I had it listed for 68. And I know that I paid um, $6 for the sweater. Uh, 1140 Poshmark fees, so $45.60 less my $60. So, I mean, my $6 that I paid, so like $39 profit on that. That was a good pickup. Let's scroll through here quickly and see if there's anything else. Oh, this is another great sale. This was new with tag, Emerald Design. 
uh, was the brand. I had this listed for $75 or $79 and I received a $65 offer. I did pay about $10 for this. I wanna say it was like $11.99 or $12.99 with 20% off at Savers. I know I bought it at Savers. $65 less Poshmark, Poshmark fees of 13. My net earnings were $52 minus my sales. So if I come over here, if I just put in the world emerald, it should pop up. Or if I do Irish knit, um, there it is. So I did already mark this sold. So I paid $10 is what I had. So my earnings were 40 after marketplace fees. I'm just hustling along here. Reselling really is a grind. I'm sharing with you some of these fun sales, you know, like a $600 dress. That literally has never happened to me before. There's so many more of the $20 and $30 sales to even, you know, even a $50 or $60 sale for me at least, I don't take for granted. This is a grind. This, this is not a business that is a get rich quick. You work really hard here. You've probably heard me say this before if you've been with me for a while. This is, a simple job, but it isn't easy. It's not rocket science. Buy low, sell high, be a good seller, sell quality items, disclose what you have, but it isn't easy. It's a lot of grunt work. It's a lot of behind the scenes. It's a lot of, you know, the steaming and the gas to get to places, photographs that accurately depict your item, trying to figure out where to price it so that you're making some money and other people's are gonna be, people are gonna be interested, the keywords and the title. It's a lot to think about. It's a simple business, but it's not an easy business. That's what I like to say. Oh, this was a good one to mention. Okay, so this was a bundle that sold for $98. Um, let's show the detail here. So $95. My Poshmark fees were 19, so I was left with 76. These uh, silk ATM pants I got at the Nordstrom sale. I also think it's fun to be sharing with you all these sales. Lulu's hacking again. I also think it's fun to share with you all the different places that I bought these things. Some things were retail arbitrage like this. Some things I got at the bins. A lot of things are from savers or from like my, my little honey hole. I buy things everywhere. And I think it's interesting to see the different price points. Some of the stuff was my own, like the city carriage from American Girl and everything in between. So these I did purchase at the Nordstrom sale and I can't remember what I paid for them. So let's just look. These were $15. Okay, so I paid 15. I said in my sale detail that these sold for 80 and basically that the Patagonia sold for 15 that's like in my brain when you sell a bundle vendu doesn't split it for you you have to put in what the item sold for i could have said that these sold for 75 and the patagonia sold for 20 i could have said that the patagonia sold for full price of 22 and that these sold for 73 you can do the breakdown however you want i said that these sold for 80 dollars my cost of goods was 15, my profit was $49. This was a great sale as well. Let's do one or two more sales and then I think we'll be at 10 of my top 10 here. Uh, let me see if there was anything here on eBay as far as my sales went. That was a higher amount. I tend to have pretty decent numbers here on eBay. This Red Sox Victoria's Secret Spirit jersey sold for 30. This Johnny Cupcake sold for 18. Oh, I definitely wanted to mention this. I was so excited about this and I don't know if I could have gotten more on this. This Pottery Barn Thanksgiving tablecloth. I found it again at yet another thrift store that's close to where my mom and dad live. I don't go to the store frequently and they have a back room with housewares. I went back. This tablecloth was $9, but the price tag on it was $89. Then I looked at some sold comps. Sold comps, $149, $130, and I was like, mind blown, couldn't believe it. When I went to list it, however, this actual one was on the Pottery Barn website. I don't know if it's still there. Pottery Barn Snoopy Thanksgiving tablecloth. And I also knew like I had to get this listed like ASAP. So this is the one, Pottery Barn Kids. Is this it? Anyway, now, now this is saying no longer available. So I was all geared up, ready to list it for $150. And then it was available online for like $60, $70. And I was like, oh no, when did this happen? Because I don't go to their site all the time. And when I first looked, it was unavailable. When I looked when I was going to list this, it was available. So I just listed it at the regular price, $89. And boom, it sold within days. Part of me thinks that I could have probably marked it at that $125, $130 
and it still would have sold pretty high. But again, this was a win-win. $89 for a tablecloth that I spent $9 on and it sold in two days and it was seasonal. Like, let's face it, not many people are gonna be looking for that tablecloth now. So I listed it. I had a short window, it sold for full asking price within days, and my profit was great on that. I paid $9, uh, and then it sold, so my profit was $80 less the market fees on um, eBay. So probably my profit was more around like $65. And I don't know if this sold via promoted listing, let's see. Uh, no, that one just sold outright from what I can see. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. There's the gunny sacks. Oh, this was another one. This men's vintage Woolrich Arctic Parker. Um, I got this at the same place as I got the quilted black loafers that sold for $152. So I listed this for $249. I sent out offers for $199 and then somebody countered for $175. So I accepted the $175 offer. And see, all these things have been listed for a long time, so it's probably time to relist all those. But this sold for $175, $11 were my cost of goods, so $164 before eBay fee. So that was a great sale. So the Canada Goose Jacket sold for $600, and then this sold for $175. So definitely a great time to get those high-level parkas listed okay and i'm going to do this one last sale and then we will leave you oh i have i have two well this kate spade bag sold i just shipped this out this was in my own personal collection i had had it for a long time i listed it for 90 dollars, which was definitely high but i my i think my mother-in-law bought this for me years ago and i'm sure she paid a decent amount when i was more into kate spade so i took a 55 dollars offer it's from my personal closet it's usually a wash for tax purposes. I'm gonna leave you with this beautiful story from this person. Um, this is a vintage 1980s gunned rattle teddy bear. I had it listed for $70. I think I sent out offers for 50 or 55. Somebody counted at 45 and I accepted. And this woman sent me the sweetest, the sweetest message. When my youngest son, John, was born, his older brother gave him baby Ted the little boy version of this rattle. Years later, John received Big Ted, the larger version. I saved both of the bears for John, but with our boys, I had no idea if he had kept them. This past Saturday, I found out that he had kept them both, and then she wrote joy in big, in big letters. John and his wife are expecting their first child, a daughter, in eight days. When I knew that John had his Ted's, I began looking for this little baby Ted, a baby girl Ted. I'm very excited to give this to my granddaughter. These stories always make me sad. I'm such a sap. I'm such a sap in my old age. I pray you have a blessed Thanksgiving as well as upcoming Christmas season. I don't know, sometimes I get frustrated with this business and then sometimes I get letters like that and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I do what I do. And I got that at the bins and paid about a buck. So it was really good. It's really a good profit as well. So I am going to leave you with that. My goodness, I'm so sorry those little letters get to me sometimes. It's so awesome to see like a vintage item that somebody has been searching for and you find it. Yeah, I'm just so lucky to be able to get those messages every once in a while. They make my day. So I am going to follow up with that woman and I hope that her baby granddaughter is born and healthy and enjoys her new little baby bear. That is all for today's video and all done with my crying. If you want to give Vendu a try, I really highlighted a lot of things that Vendu did in today's video. Click the link in my description. You will save 25% off your first month of service. Thank you so much, Vendu, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you all, and I will see you on December 1st for my first day of Happy Holidays, where I will bring you some form of a haul every day for 10 days. So be sure to like this video if you had fun or if you learned anything. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It helps me out so much. I'm on the road to 30K subscribers and I am just honored that you guys choose to watch me. So thank you so much if you subscribe. It really helps my channel and it will help me reach that goal as well. Thank you guys. I love you so much and I'll be back on December 1st for happy holidays. See you soon. Bye.